Uh, I think we should start off. Hello, everyone. Uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of this wonderful Saturday to join us. So today in this webinar, we'll be looking at a very important thing. That is how to craft your own pension and how to build your own corpus towards retirement. This webinar is crafted towards people who want to build your retirement corpus as well as people who are uh, near or maybe close to retirement and who want to uh, kind of secure the retirement with uh, and maximize their pension as high as possible. So uh, do join us and we will kind of uh, take you over how to create a pension as well as how to safeguard this pension as well. Joining me today is my colleague uh, Vinaya Kumar. He is also my uh, fellow financial planner and we both will be uh, taking you through the presentation. To start off, what is a pension and why do you need one? See, uh, very simple. Uh, we have a working age of maybe, let's say we start working at around 25. Let's say we start working at around 25 or 30. Uh, we have a working age of around 20 years or 25 years. That's pretty much it. After that, all of us will need a monthly uh, amount so that we can sustain our retirement. Now, how is this amount built? This amount is built in our working years by saving, by investing. Now, the products that we save and invest in is very, very important as well. So, for example, what is one of the most common sources of retirement funds? The employee provident fund is one very common source of fund where, uh, you know, through your working age, it is built up. The employer contributes, you contribute as your salary increases. The EPF also goes up. The EPF has two components, the EPF and the EPS, where the EPS is used to generate a pension in your retirement and the EPF is paid out as a lump sum. So this is how the employee provident fund works. But other than that, are we invested in any other instruments that give us a pension benefit? and how to make optimal use of this investment so that come retirement, these investments will yield us as high as a pension as possible. Now, the pension amount that you and I will require will be very, very different. Maybe I require a pension of, let's say, 50,000 per month, but you require a pension of, let's say, 1 lakh per month. So this will depend on individual to individual. So this is very, very important to go for as high as a pension as possible because one thing that is certain in retirement is expenses and especially medical expenses can go up exponentially. In a country like India, where the social security benefits are not as pronounced as something like a US or the European Union, it is our duty to build our own pension as well as to safeguard our assets during the process. So that is why you need a pension, and a pension is any amount that you will require at retirement. So now that the basics are covered, let's look at why are you needing a pension? See, people uh, in the conventional time during our parents' days, they usually retired at around, let's say, 60 years or maybe a little bit further as well. But in today's age, people are looking to retire at maybe 50, 45, 55. So early retirement and financial independence is becoming very common nowadays. So uh, the salaries have also gone up propon uh, proportionally. The pension amount and the time period of the pension, as I said, will differ from one person to another person. So if you're someone who's planning or retiring early, it is very, very crucial that you plan out your retirement in such a way that for that five or six years uh, that you're not working or you're working as a consultant or your income is somewhat something that is uh, uh, not very uh, stable, that is also should be accounted into your retirement corpus during your working years. So simply your investment or saving amount has to go up proportionally to that uh, early retirement kind of stage. Okay, so to make this uh, webinar more interesting, we kind of included case studies where uh, we've included two case studies where the first case study will, will focus on Tarun, who is 30 years old, who is a freelance worker and who wants to retire in 20 years. So if you look at it, Tarun is someone who uh, maybe uh, has a couple of years of experience, wants to kind of dive into the aspect of being an entrepreneur, being a business owner, and he wants to retire in the maybe next 20 years where, you know, uh, maybe his business is still there, but he doesn't want to be actively participating in the business. And he wants to maybe take a step back and maybe uh, live a good retirement. You see, one thing that Tarun is certain about is he wants to have an early retirement. So that is one thing that we will need to plan towards. So let's see how this case study proceeds. Okay, first thing is how can Tarun build a pension? So we look at what is a pension, why do you need a pension, and why it will differ from person to person. Now we look at why does Tarun specifically need a pension? 
uh, and how can it build it? See, very simple. Uh, except for the EPF and maybe the retirement benefits that you get, something like a gratuity where after you work for five years with a specific organization, you are eligible for gratuity. And something like a leave travel encashment uh, uh, for the paid leaves at retirement. Other than this, conventionally, there are not a lot of instruments where you get a pension from. One instrument that is very common is an FD. A fixed deposit uh, is something that will give you a specified interest after the tax deducted as source is gone. So that is one way where you can kind of get a, a pension. But Tarun is still young. He needs a, to build a pension corpus. If he had invested his money in a fixed deposit, it would give him a 6-7% return, hardly even beating out inflation. So this is where something like equity instruments come in. This is where something like mutual funds come in. Because if he had invested in companies, companies usually can grow wealth at a higher rate than or so a rate that is closer to the economy. If Even if he gets a 10-11% return over a long period, not only will it edge past inflation, this 1 or 2% over inflation, if it compounds for 10 or 12 years, this will help him to build a good corpus. See, it is very, very important in early years to go a little bit overboard on equity. Why is this important? See, I'll give you a very simple example. If someone is 50 years old or 52 years old, having a lot of exposure to equity, especially towards their retirement, that isn't something that is recommended. That risk capitate might not be that. The risk capacity might not be that. So these two things are very, very important. Tarun now has a very high risk capacity because he can afford to take that a risk. He's young. So even if there is a decline, there's still ample amount of time to build back that corpus. So equity should be one of the most important proponents of how he can build a pension corpus. How much pension corpus will he require? Like I said, Tarun is someone who's an entrepreneur. So let's say he requires a monthly pension of 1 lakh at retirement. Now you see, 1 lakh is today's value. Now this 1 lakh 20 years from now will be close to around 2.25 lakhs or 2.3 lakhs. So that is the amount that he will need to withdraw 20 years from now. So that is equal to 1 lakh today. So the inflation is a silent killer. We usually don't see it. But over the years, this will kind of build up. So let me just give you an example. Around 2016, 2017, uh, let's say eight years back, nine years back, petrol prices were around 65, 70 rupees. Now, fast forward eight years later, Petrol prices have gone up to close to 100, maybe even 101 or 102. Now, this is how inflation works, where maybe during a span of one year or two years, maybe it doesn't affect you directly. But over a period of eight years or nine years, you can kind of see the impact of it. And this is especially true for the next question, where how much should his monthly pension be? Not only should his monthly pension be able to take care of his expenses in retirement, but also to cater to any emergencies or to medical emergencies that might arise upon suddenly. So how does this work? So let's say you're retired, 60, 61, you're retired and you're living a life in return. Let's say you do have a health insurance plan, but that is uh, a, a health insurance plan only covers certain amounts of money. But after that, let's say you do require a surgery where the health insurance, let's say, covers 70%, 80% of it. Now, obviously, your pension will not be able to cover the rest of it. So only thing that you can do is withdraw from the initial corpus that is generating you a pension. So that is why it is very, very important in the working years to build up a sufficient corpus that so you know that uh, is also has a buffer built in so that in case of any medical emergencies, your initial corpus is still safe. Effects of inflation on us, pension is also something that we have talked about. How much should we invest today at arrive today to arrive at that value? Now let's look at further into the case study to answer the last question. Okay, now, having a monthly pension of 1.5 lakhs at retirement is pretty comfortable. So let's say uh, Tarun has a monthly expense of 60,000, 70,000. He still be able, uh, left with around 40, 45,000 in his retired years so that he can maybe, you know, uh, spend it on whatever he wants. To generate this 1.5 lakhs, he would read he would require a corpus of 4.5 crores at the age of 50 so that this 4.5 crores can generate him a 1.5 lakhs of pension now the monthly investment that he would require today so how, how do we arrive at these numbers so it's simple for the present value of these numbers is what we calculate that is the amount that you will need to invest today 
which is 58,000. Considering inflation at 6% and considering an equity rate of return at 10%, you see, we have taken conservative values because in a conservative scenario, if you're able to build the corpus, in a scenario where your rate of return is, let's say, 12 or 13%, you'll definitely be able to build that corpus and not only be able to build the corpus, you'll also be able to build a much bigger corpus. So the monthly investment today is 58,000. Let's say at inflation at 6% and a rate of return at 10%. Now, the, the biggest question might be from you guys is, Okay, 58,000 start off uh, the back, it might be hard to invest in. That is why I want to introduce you the concept of uh, step up SIP. Now, we all know SIPs, they've been advertised a lot. Uh, we are a big proponent of SIPs as well. So uh, let's say you start off with a 10 or 15,000 per month. Then stepping up your investments every year by let's say 10%, 15%, 12% will kind of get you to this corpus and much more. That is why stepping up your investments is very, very important. We understand that starting off with a higher amount is often not possible for a lot of people. So that is why a step up investment when your bonuses or hikes come in is very, very important. What I've seen from my experience is that most people, what they do is they kind of invest in a static manner for a period of five, six years. And even though the corpus is big, the corpus is not often sufficient. Now, step up in the sense might be difficult for some people. What we also recommend is what some people do is they invest for a period of one and a half year, two years. And let's say when they get a bonus, they kind of invest it. This is also a good way to invest it because your bonus can be structured in such a way like an SIP as well. Okay, now we shall look at the components of a pension. Now we look at what is a pension? Why do you need a pension? How to build, how to start looking at how a pension works and look at what are the components of a pension is very, very important. Now, let me take something that is very, very common in the Indian context, which is interest income. Let's say I put my money in a fixed deposit. I get interest every month. Now, uh, how does it work? I put my money in a fixed deposit. I get a regular interest every month. Is it predictable? Yes. NFT gives you a 7% or a 6.5% interest. It is locked in. I'm going to give it. I'm going to get it every month. Is it flexible? No, it is never flexible. You see, when I lock in an FD uh, at a bank, the interest that I get is fixed. Uh, I can't increase the interest or I can't decrease the interest. That amount is something that I will have to live with. I'll have to uh, work around, work my expenses around that amount, whereas that amount will not be flexible. Is it inflation adjusted? No, FDs offer a fixed rate. Uh, they are not inflation adjusted. If the inflation goes up, your uh, monthly income will not be sufficient to meet your expense. Now we talked about interest first. Let, let's go back to dividends. What are dividends? When you invest in a company, uh, out of the profits, let's say the company makes profits, out of these profits, a small share is given to shareholders. Now, one thing about dividends is uh, they might be regular, they might not be regular is the real question. See, uh, regular in the sense that if uh, good dividends are usually given by large, big companies, blue chip companies, where you know uh, their shareholders require a dividend. So every month on month, they do kind of offer a dividend. Maybe there might be uh, every year they do kind of uh, give out a dividend. And there might be an odd year where they might, you know, cut down the dividend or maybe not give the dividend. But that is part of the cycle. But for most part, dividends can be regular if you invest in the right companies. Are they predictable? No. As a shareholder, you have almost no control. As a minority shareholder, you have almost no control over what dividend the company or the board of directors declare. So if you are going to depend on that in your retirement, it is going to be a very cautionary tale. Is it flexible? Um, not really. Well, flexible in the sense that, yes, let's say they give you one rupee per share per dividend. Maybe in the next year it can be two. The next year it can be three. Or it can be go from one to 0.5 as well. So it is flexible. But it is not flexible in your needs where if I want a higher dividend this year, I'm not gonna, I might may get it, I might not get it. If I'm gonna require three rupees share dividend, but the company only requires the company only gives me two rupees, that's still an increase, but not as much an increase that I will need. So dividend, so counting on dividend income to meet your household expenses in retirement is something that can be only possible if you have a very, very large portion in certain blue chip companies. Inflation adjusted. For most reasons, yes, uh, dividends are usually increased year on year, at least slightly uh, by the company so that the, you know, the shareholders are able to keep up, uh, maybe not beat inflation or maybe you know get close or at least keep up with inflation. Now, the third one is rental income. To first, to get the rental income, you need properties, 
and to you know build up these properties you need to take massive home loans or things like that but if you are someone who already has rental properties uh, then rental income is a pretty good source i will say see it is regular Yes, rental income is pretty regular, but what we've seen is that uh, in the case where, you know, the tenants are changing, uh, in the case where, you know, there is uh, some vacancy for the two month or three month period where, you know, uh, the tenants are, you know, looking, you, you are looking for tenants to kind of occupy the place. That is a point where, you know, rental in income can kind of go missing, but for most part, yes, rental income is pretty regular. Is it predictable? Yes, you're going to receive, let's say, 50,000 rent per month. This is only going to go up uh in the future years you're not you're never going to charge maybe lesser than this is it flexible no if it's going to be fifty thousand rent per month it's only going to be fifty thousand rent per month you can maybe increase it next year or as per the contract is it going to be inflation adjusted uh that is as per you so let's say in an you are uh it will be highly dependent on the area that you buy a house in if you are if you have a rental property in a prime location and there is good demand Yes, you can command whatever rent that you want and uh, there's a higher probability that you'll probably get it. You know, there's a pretty good probability that you'll probably get it. But if you're in a, a rent, if you're in an area that is not prime, that is not very desirable, even a slight increase in rent can attract competitors who, you know, can bring down their rents and bring their tenants back in. So that is something which will be highly dependent on value of rental properties. Fourth is pension. So pension, what we're talking about is basically uh, uh, the EPF or the EPS corpus. Yes, it is regular. It is pretty predictable. Let's say out of the, you have built up an EPS corpus of 20 lakhs. You not only going to, you're going to have a regular pension, it's going to be predictable as this. It is not going to be flexible, meaning you get a 20,000 pension. It is going to be 20,000 only. It is not going to increase or decrease. It doesn't really increase or uh, adjust with inflation. So that is also there. Now, Let's come to SWV. First, I'll take you through what a systematic withdrawal plan is. And the thing is, there are two components of a systematic withdrawal plan. Now, let me give a case of my own friend's father as an example. He had a, uh, he, his dad was retiring at the age of 55, and he, he had a corpus of around a crore that he had built up during his uh, retirement. He also had other corpus, but uh, this was his corpus at uh, retirement. Now, how has he structured it? He is, is gone for a systematic withdrawal plan. How this works is first two or three years of expenses, his father, let's say 10 lakhs or 15 lakhs or 20 lakhs or 5 lakhs, he passes it in debt mutual funds. From these debt mutual funds, he kind of uh, takes a monthly kind of uh, withdrawal from these debt mutual funds. He sets up a SWP and he kind of withdraws, let's say, 50,000 or 25,000 month on month where the debt mutual, where the existing corpus in debt mutual funds earns him a return as well as he kind of withdraws it. Now, the return on debt mutual funds is uh, around 4 to 5%, maybe 6% in some cases, but only if you withdraw under this amount can your corpus sustain, but in most cases, it is pretty difficult to sustain the corpus because the interest rates are lower. So he continues to withdraw from this uh, debt mutual fund, whereas the rest of the 75 lakhs or 80 lakhs is parked in equity instruments, which kind of gives him the kicker to growth. Now, every two years or every three years, he redeems some of these funds from equities and takes it into debt so that his SWP can keep going on. Now, is SWP regular? Yes, SWP in debt funds is pretty regular. It is pretty predictable. Let's say I set up an amount of 50,000. I will get that 50,000 every month on a regular basis. Is it flexible? No. This is where an SWP will differ from all other instruments. And not only will it differ from all other instruments, it will differ to your own advantage. Now, let me give you a very simple example. Let's say this month, instead of needing 50,000, I need a lakh. An SWP can cater to that. It will give me that additional 50,000. Whereas an FD won't give me a dividend. I have no it, dividend and interest. I have no, uh, not even a chance of even knowing what it will be. Pension and rent will definitely not give me. So the flexibility is where an SWP really, really excels. Where you want control over your money and uh, you can, you know, make your own decisions. Is it inflation adjusted? Yes, every year you can kind of keep increasing SWP to whatever you want. So maybe a couple of years you don't increase your SWP. Next year you can increase your SWP. So this is where an SWP in debt instruments is pretty good, whereas your corpus and equity can also grow. Now, why do we insist on getting your asset allocation right? See, there are a lot of instruments who, which can give you uh, kind of a pension in retirement. but 
there are only a few instruments who can, which can help you build that good pension. See, there are uh, ULIP policies, there are insurance instruments which can also give you kind of a pension, can, can also kind of help you build it. But why is that? Why do we not recommend it? Very simple. All of these policies have kind of a thing where uh, the percentage return on insurance policies that you get, although it is fixed, doesn't even beat inflation in most cases. Whereas with ULIPS, the charges and the five-year lock-in period associated with it is the most definitely not something we would recommend to investors. That is why having a good asset allocation in place, especially during the years that you're building your retirement corpus is very, very important. Having a good exposure to equities is also very important. So if you look at uh, equities, uh, during the phase of, let's say, uh, 2020 and 2021, large cap has been a pretty good outlier where you know 14% uh, return or 22% return maybe not as much high as the small cap return they are pretty good as well but if you look at the years of 2018 2019 those small cap has performed in 2020 and 2021 2018 and 2019 have been periods of concern for small caps where if you had invested in this what i've seen even my own friends do is they were not able to bear the pain and they redeemed the amount now if you had held if you you can make the argument that Maybe if you held it for the period of two years or three years, you can kind of make it. But if you have your entire allocation in small cap, this is where it doesn't work out. So that is why having a good asset allocation mix skewed in favor of maybe equity in the initial years kind of helps you uh, generate that big retirement corpus so that you can continue to withdraw a pension at a time. Okay, now, how do you create that big retirement corpus or and as well as uh, how do you kind of uh, kind of beat inflation with it? This is where mutual funds come from. Now, just a small note on mutual funds. Uh, they are subject to market risks. Uh, do read all scheme related documents very carefully. But what we've seen is that over a period of seven, 10 years, when you, when you kind of invest consistently, it is very, very good. If you look at it, uh, if I invest in FD or you invest in FD, it's going to be the same for you. But that is that shouldn't be the case. I might have a goal that is in five years. Or I might have a goal that is in 10 years. Or I might have a goal that is coming up very shortly in the next six months. Now, this is where mutual funds excel because they are suitable for all types of investors. You can invest in, I can invest in, I can start off with a thousand amount. I have funds that cater to the long term. I have funds that cater to the short term. I have funds that cater to the medium term. I have funds where I don't need to take a lot of risk, but still get some uh, uh, some acceptable return. I have funds where I can take a lot of risk over a long term period. So that is something where mutual funds really excel and uh, kudos to SEBI, our market regulator. They have done a fantastic job of regulating the mutual fund space as well. Liquidity is another thing where uh, now that India is aiming for, you know, a T plus uh, zero settlement cycle, that is also really good. But usually T plus two or T plus three is when you will get the redemption from your mutual funds. It's pretty well regulated. That is variety where each and every one of you can go for it. The only thing that we kind of ask from investors is discipline where you invest in a disciplined way through an SIP and you step up your investments as well so that more money kind of goes towards it in the initial years. And then this can compound with time. The time is something that we'll kind of need. Now, you need someone to guide you through the process because not all funds are equal. See, very simple. Uh, there are around 3,500, 4,000 mutual funds in the market, uh, including all three asset classes, equity, debt, and gold. Now, how will you know which mutual fund is going to be good? Now, a two-star uh, mutual fund, uh, due to the rankings, may, may be something that you, you don't invest in. But that two-star mutual fund, maybe in the next three years, maybe it is developing a portfolio that it will perform in the future. It, may, it might not perform now, but it might perform in the future. See, when you invest, you always invest for future returns and not for past returns. So that is why just by going off arbitrary criteria like star ratings and the word of one, proper research in mutual funds is required before you invest in it. So a financial advisor is equally important in that aspect. Now, the power of SIP. Uh, this is where the, the concept of uh, rupee cost averaging comes in, where you invest during market downturns, you invest during market up cycles, and you kind of form an average line that kind of keeps you in a moderation and helps you generate good returns. That is how an SIP works. Uh, SIP is meant to not, you know, kind of uh, 
time the market. I, I had uh, some clients who said, you know, uh, markets were at a high at 17,000, markets were at a high at 18,000. But if you look at now, markets have gone up 2,000 more points to 20,500. Now, this is something where you can't really have control of it. But if you have an SIB going on, it will kind of help you take average of it and make you make better returns over the long term as well. If you had stopped investing at 17,000 or 18,000, thinking the market was high and it's going to go down, you wouldn't be able to benefit from the market peak that is now. So that is why we insist on an SIP and insist more importantly, insist on increasing it every year. OK, now creating your first pro. See, a uh, first floor is often uh, looked at upon uh, in such glory that, you know, for all of us, a floor is something that uh, is something, you know, we all want to get to it. Uh, when do you see yourself making one crore is something that is very important for some of us. It may be five years, some of it 10, 10 years, some of us maybe 15 or 20 years. Uh, an investor can become a crore pretty in 15 years with a monthly SIP of just 20,000. See, and an annual step up. Let's say I take, I invest monthly SIP of 20,000. Uh, let's say I get 12% return on equity. Since it's 15 years over the long term, I've taken an average return that is available on the index. And the target corpus is one crore. Let's see how it works. How should it work? I start off with an SIP and I kind of add on to it with more step ups and lump sums. So whenever I get a bonus, whenever I get a payout from my insurance policy that I previously invested in, I kind of deploy it in a structured way. Step up is where, let's say I get a 15% high. Maybe 5% of this height, I can maybe put it towards an SIP. So this is a very, very easy formula to look at, but is very hard to follow behaviorally because behaviorally there are, we as human have constraints where, you know, uh, uh, short term needs usually triumph long term needs. So short term satisfaction usually comes up front. So that is why, you know, uh, increasing your investments or maybe putting more money towards investment is not something that uh, we all look at. Uh, yeah, uh, all of you would be, uh, pretty much know what compounding is. Uh, it is known as the eighth wonder of the world. You know, uh, just like a, a, a good uh, uh, example would be a snowball, which, you know, you know, starts at the top of a mountain and, you know, it rolls down, rolls down, rolls down, rolls down. And at the end, you know, it forms a massive big avalanche that can, you know, wipe out even an entire town. That's how a corpus is built. You start off slowly, you build it off year on year where the ball gets big and, you know, you're... Uh, suddenly you look at it, you, you can maybe ret retire maybe five or six years even before your retirement date. So that is something where compounding gives you. Now, uh, I do want to look at a very, very important example of an SIP in a equity fund running for five, 10 and 15 years. Now, let's say I start off with a monthly SIP of 10,000, which uh, for like at least like 30, 40% of people, it should be achievable. The rate of return, let's say I assume at 10%. Now, if I take a time period of five years, I would have invested six lakhs and my total fund value will be 8.25 lakhs, which is okay. Now, let's say I double the time period to 10 years. I would have doubled my investment amount to 12 lakhs. But if you look at it, the amount of profits that I have gained have gone almost close to double the amount of my invested capital. And subsequently, if I increase it to 15 years, the amount invested 18 lakhs and the total value is 50 lakhs. Now, this is just assuming 10,000. There is a chance that maybe you add enough extra 50,000 during that whole 15 year period. There's a chance that you increase your SIP from 10 to 12,000 during that whole SIP period. There's a very, very high chance that that happens. So during that period, the effect of compounding will be much more high. Now, let's say look at a, another example where there is a step up of 25% to that 10,000. If you look at the 15 year example, the amount you've invested is 1.3 crores and the total value is around 2.9, 2.2 crores. So you pretty much achieved your corpus in a 15 year period if you went for a good step up contribution. So this is why even though an SIP is very important, stepping up your investments is equally important. Okay, now we looked at SIP, step up SIP. Now we look at what a lump sum works. Let's say you have one, term, uh, one time lump sum of 10 lakhs and you invested. Uh, you see, the money still grows, but the thing with the lump sum is without any further contributions, you are you are kind of uh, depriving the uh, market of, let's say, uh, you, you're focusing more on market timing than kind of putting it in uh, an SIP kind of way. But still, if you assume a 12% return over a period of 15 years, your amount still grows to around 55, 56 lakhs. 
which is pretty good. But you know, subs, uh, adding on additional investments to your lump sum is often the way to go. Now, the, what is the ideal strategy? You might ask. Lump sum plus SIP is always the ideal strategy. Let's say you have a lump sum of ten lakhs, as well as you add on an SIP of ten thousand every month. This is how it should work. If you look at the 15 year period, the lump sum along with the SIP has given you that one crore milestone that we aim for. So 15 years, you are put in around 38, 39 lakhs, you have gotten around 1.1 crores. So let's say you get a return of maybe instead of 12%, you maybe get a couple percentage points higher, 14%. In that case, that amount would be achievable at a maybe instead of 15 years, it will be achievable in 12 years or 13 years. So this is where the combination of lump sum and the SIP combined with a step up SIP can be a killer strategy in investing. Now, we should look at what are some of the schemes that are available to kind of help you in retirement. I shall pass on to my colleague who will take you through these schemes where let's say you have built up an investment corpus. How do you structure it effectively to get you towards your goal of getting a higher monthly pension So on to you, Vinay. Hi, hi, thank you, Nakul, for the brief intro on the pension plans and everything. So, yeah. You can keep that screen. Yeah. So, starting with the first thing, post office monthly income scheme. So, what happens in post office monthly income scheme is, suppose you are already near the retirement and you wanted to create a monthly income plan. So, in this, what happens is, you will deploy a certain fixed lump sum amount and with that, it is a government guaranteed scheme. So your benefits and returns are guaranteed and you'll get a monthly return for that specific period of time from the lump sum that you have uh, invested. Suppose, for example, in the post office monthly income scheme, the interest rate that is currently given is out given out is 7.4% per annum. This return is actually changed quarterly and revised quarterly, but it actually stays in that uh, range itself, 74 to 7% itself. So what, how the post office monthly income scheme work is right now the maximum limit it's like a, with a joint holder it's like you and suppose your spouse you can invest up to 15 lakhs into post office monthly income scheme. Sorry for the single account you can invest up to 15 lakhs for a joint account with you and your spouse you can invest up to 30 lakhs into the post office monthly income scheme account. So the lock in period would be first five years and after the 10 year you will get your entire lump sum back. So again, you may be, you can again go and reinvest into this uh, post office monthly income scheme. So let's go with an example and see it's like if I'm deploying 15 lakhs and 30 lakhs, what would be the difference and what, what would be the monthly income that I can get from the post office monthly income scheme? Yeah. So right now, suppose for example, if I'm investing single account nine, nine lakhs, so with a 7.4% interest rate and lock-in period of five years, I would actually get 5,000 rupees as a monthly income for next five years. And after that, again, after five years, I'll get my 9 lakh rupees back. Again, suppose, for example, I'm investing 50 lakh rupees into post office monthly income scheme. For the next five years period, I'll get a monthly income plan, monthly income of somewhere around 9,250 rupees. It's actually not bad, but when you have an equity component growing on and other things, it's like with this 15 lakhs of joint account itself, you'll get somewhere around 9,000 rupees of pension. Apart from that, one thing is it's like there's one more scheme that is available for senior citizens. Uh, next slide, please. So suppose you are a senior citizen in India. So eligibility is simple, 60 years and above. So in senior citizen savings scheme, what is the plan is? You will invest a lump sum, lump sum amount in this specific scheme. And earlier post office monthly income scheme, you would get a interest monthly. But in senior citizen savings scheme, you would get the interest quarterly. So for the senior citizen savings scheme, it's actually very attractive. It actually gives a rate of return of 8.2% per annum and the interest pay is payable quarterly. So one thing is for this, the duration would be same five years and it can be extended to another block of three years. Earlier, it was just eight years, first five years and it can be extended to one more block of three years. So the earlier, uh, whatever the change, uh, it's like recent, whatever the changes were made, what is the output is right now, the senior citizen can actually increase the tenure for unlimited years with the block of three years. Suppose, for example, if you are investing for five years, next you can again reinvest the proceeds for next three years. And again, you can keep on continuing for the block of three years unlimited time. So yeah, we'll see it's like with an example and case study. If I'm investing 30 lakhs into senior citizen savings scheme, what would be the monthly income that I can receive? 
So if I'm suppose investing 30 lakhs into senior citizen savings scheme as a single account, I would receive a quarterly income of 61,000, which would which would convert into 20,000 per month. In the same case, suppose for example, if I'm investing 60 lakhs into senior citizen savings scheme, this would be a maximum limit for a joint account. Suppose for example, I'm investing 60 lakh into senior citizen savings scheme, I would get a quarterly income of 1,23,000. So comparatively to the PPF, post office monthly income scheme, FD, everything for senior citizen, senior citizen savings scheme is the one of the best investment avenue that you can consider. So yeah, moving on to the next scheme, uh, national pension scheme. So I would recommend, so suppose for example, if you are already having, if you already have skin in the game and if you are already an equity mutual fund investor, if you want to, if you're already in the old tax regime too, and if you want to bring down your tax liability, then maybe you can have something like a national pension scheme and bring down your tax liability. Apart from that, if you are a new investor and if you want to try out equity and to see it's like how it works and everything, then maybe you can start with the national pension scheme. So in national pension scheme, the uh, one major benefit is suppose if you, for example, for an annual basis, if you invest 50,000, you will get a deduction of uh, 50K from your total tax. And actually, this is one of the good scheme that is available in the market. So what will happen is the lock-in period would be 60 to 70 and the returns, it would be linked with the market. So in that also, you would have three asset classes that you can choose from equity, uh, government securities and debt, etc. So in this, what happens is in national pension scheme, suppose for example, if you're contributing 50,000 per year, every year for next 30 to 40 years, you would actually build a corpus of maybe one to two crores, et cetera, in this national pension scheme. So what happens in the maturity is 60% of the entire corpus would be tax free and 40% of that would be mandatorily, you will have to purchase an annuity plan. But doing a math, uh, what I figured out is, is like suppose for example, if you're investing uh, 50K into equity mutual fund, uh, et cetera, for next 30 years, uh, assuming a rate of return of 10%, I would actually build a corpus of one crore uh, in next 30 years with assuming a rate of return of 10%. Similarly, in NPs also, I would have built a corpus of one crore. So in equity mutual fund, after the paying the tax of 10% after one lakh exemption, the total tax would be 8 lakh 89,000 rupees for that one crore. And I would get entire 96 lakhs rupees as a tax free. But in NPS, other way around, suppose for example, if you're investing and getting a corpus of one crore, 60% of that, so 60 lakhs would be completely tax free and 40 lakhs you would mandatorily go and buy a pension plan or annuity plan from that. So in that case, even if suppose, for example, if you're getting the 40 lakhs rupees uh, and you're going and purchasing an annuity or pension plan, the monthly income that you will receive from that would be only 20,000 or 25,000 odd. So in that case, it would not be inflation adjusted that uh, certain factor is there. But apart from that, if you are a new investor and if you want to try out and figure out how the equity works and if you want to have a disciplined saving investment, national pension scheme would be a good scheme that you can add in your portfolio. Yeah, uh, so we can go with a case study. Uh, yeah, let's uh, meet Abhishek. He has 2.5 uh, of crores of corpus already ready. Earlier, we saw an example of Tarun. He was uh, starting in his career and he wanted to build a corpus. Right now, in this case of Abhishek, he already has a 2.5 crores of retirement corpus already. Let's see and let's figure out how we can help him restructure and park the exact 2.5 corpus into what investment avenue, etc. So yeah, so starting from the basics, as a risk management tool, having an emergency or medical reserve is very important during the retirement because health insurance uh, policy would be also there, but as the year goes by, the premiums would be very expensive. So hence, having some medical reserve or emergency reserve set aside would be very great start. So in that case, what we are recommending is 10 lakh rupees from the 2.3 crores uh, can be actually mapped into fixed deposit or short-term debt instrument as a medical reserve or emergency reserve. Apart from that, to create a monthly pension, we can park 30 lakhs into senior citizen savings scheme into single account and 50 lakhs into post office monthly income scheme. From this, he would get a good monthly income and monthly pension from this uh, 45 lakhs on. Apart from that, what we will do is whatever 1.25 crores corpus is left, we will actually go and keep an equity so that over a period of time, whenever we have, uh, whenever our expenses also rises with the inflation, our equity component will give that growth factor. So your corpus will also compound and actually keep on growing. Apart from that, what, also, what, what else we can do is 
suppose for example if i am investing around uh, 45 lakhs into senior citizen savings scheme and post office monthly income scheme the total monthly pension i might get would be somewhere around 25000 right so in that case suppose for example i need some extra money and extra extra pension what we can do is we can actually do a systematic withdrawal plan from the equity so what we'll do is next 5 years of expenses we'll actually uh, remove and withdraw from the equity and park it into a short term debt or liquid debt from debt fund from that we'll actually trigger a systematic withdrawal plan when we trigger a systematic withdrawal plan we'll actually get the monthly income from that uh, directly into the bank account apart from that overall as we saw in that asset mosaic uh, nakul had explained so there would be volatility in the market and there is no right asset allocation or right asset that will actually outperform every time so it would be up and down in equity large cap mid cap small cap and gold too so having a gold in the overall portfolio would be actually great because it will act as a hedge so whenever there would be an upside down in equity and everything there would actually be a good appreciation in gold value so that's what we believe so having a 10% or 5% allocation in the overall portfolio towards gold would be kind of an ideal uh, scenario and recommendation yeah so as we saw it's like with all the investments that we have made he would be eligible to get a monthly pension of 29750 uh, with this uh, case study and as you saw it's like if you needs extra cash he can actually do with uh, the swp option and redeem it from the equity part also apart from that we also have assumed it's like he would have also built a epf corpus and assuming 8.1% of pension income and everything he would actually get a generate a monthly pension of 45000 so actually great and in this case for most of the people of most scenarios we won't have to go and touch the equity component for systematic withdrawal plan so hence this is an ideal strategy that we can uh, work out for the abhishek yeah so as we said it's like the equity portion of the portfolio will help him grow his money in this retirement period apart from that it's like if he needs any extra cash or extra pension he can actually trigger an swp swp with that he can get a additional monthly retirement option and also as like as we saw gold would actually acts as act as an hedge towards the overall asset allocation and bring stability towards the portfolio so yeah for mind uh, that's it it's like if you have any specific doubts or queries you can let us know so the main motive of having uh, of having this presentation, this presentation was only because, because as we as already, already might have seen in a younger age and everything, and everything people, people say it's like, like uh, go, go join a government, government job and everything you will get a ready steady pension and all it's like right now i am working in a private sector i don't have any uh, like, like promised pension plan and everything like, like how can i get a pension, pension? So that 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 that's what, what uh, was, was the basic, basic plan of creating this uh, webinar, so that we can build a good corpus in equity. We can, can have a good control, control over the SWP option, and actually we can customize our pension. So yeah. If you guys do have any questions, uh, do put them in the chat uh, box. We'll be very happy to answer them. Luckily, you can keep it full screen. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Let's see the questions. So there's a question. Uh, if, if I decide, decide to retire, retire early, can I avail the senior citizen savings scheme? So with the recent uh, changes, changes, it's like, like what, what is the option? Is suppose, suppose for example, if you're 55 and if you have the retirement proceeds and if you have the EPF corpus and everything, and if you're retiring early in 55 to 60 years of age, you can actually invest in the senior citizen savings scheme. Apart from that, you won't be directly be eligible to participate into senior citizen savings scheme. Uh, I think that question. 60 percent lump sum can be obtained by SWP. Royal Oak tax free return and period return. Yes, sir. With the new NPS kind of systematic lump sum withdrawal plan, you can kind of uh, uh, get the get best, the best of, of both worlds, worlds uh, uh, where you can keep withdrawing from your 60 percent NPS corpus. But one thing is that the 40 percent corpus is going to remain the same. So only thing that you can get from the forty percent corpus is a pension. Yes, you can postpone it till seventy five years. But why a equity might, mutual fund might be better in that aspect is that you have whole control of that bond growth. Yes, you pay a little bit more tax, but with an NPS you can only do an SWB from sixty percent of the corpus. After that, that yes, the forty percent goes, goes, but the forty percent can only be put in an NPP. You can't have any control over it. So for people who want control over their entire money. Uh, equity mutual funds works better, but 
for most other people, people i would, I would say, say nps, NPS is, is a very 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 good instrument especially with the introduction of an slw a systematic lump sum withdrawal plan it becomes tax efficient as well uh, can you talk about how pms of i thought help grow the portfolio uh, yes sir so at i thought pms we kind of take a very very uh, a stable kind of approach where risk is at the forefront of anything and everything we do think that the returns will follow and having a process based kind of approach means that yes uh, risk is at the forefront we pick good companies at the um, pretty good valuation we kind of avoid companies that are dead and this is where you know a pms can help you grow your wealth and from that, we can also help you kind of uh, uh, structure it with an SWB as well. Uh, I would say do contact me after the webinar so that I can kind of take you through the entire process and maybe, you know, explain it in much more detail. Uh, is in case a good investment option for NRA considering will be returning back to India after a few years and settle down here? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, sir. NPS is a very, very good option for NRAs, especially if you're planning to return back to India because this kind of ensures that you do have a lump sum corpus as well as a pension. The amount that that you invest in NPS will be up to you because uh, the 15,000 is for the tax limit. But let's say you are someone who wants a much bigger corpus. I would recommend you put a lot more money in because uh, other than the tax exemption, the 60% cost that you kind of can withdraw will be much higher if you put good amount of money in. How should I calculate the lump sum amount that I need when I uh, retire? Uh, so, uh, very simple, sir. So, we kind of use uh, Excel to kind of do the workings and do like a present value calculation. So, let's say I need 1 lakh in 15 years or 20 years. How much will I need today? So the calculations might be somewhat complicated sometimes. So uh, if you do need any help, please reach out to us. I'll be happy to help you uh, in that regard. Since there are any MFs, how much should how should we select MF? Uh, so selecting MF is kind of a, a thing where you know uh, it is pretty hard. Uh, we need a kind of a dedicated research team to kind of do that. So what I would suggest highly is that. Well, when you kind of go for selecting MFs or things like that, you kind of work with a financial advisor who, who does, uh, you know, a full-time job of selecting MFs. That is their daytime job. Uh, if I'm someone who's working in an organization, I might be able to select an MF, but being able to review and rebalance their portfolio is where the real returns lie. If an MF is going to be underperform me for a two or three year period, but the source of this underperformance is also very important. If the underperformance is going to come from, you know, fund management changes, the corporate government of the fund house not being okay, yes, you leave the fund, you go to another. If the underperformance is just purely going to be because the fund is uh, sticking to what it promised, but the markets are not maybe catering to it, that is where, you know, maybe sticking with the fund is also good. So, you know, uh, again, do contact us. I'll be kind of able to help you. That. Uh, sorry, I'm hearing echo. I hope the echo sound of this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Vinay, you want to take the next question? Hmm. So, my investment period is uh, 10 to 15 years. 90% of my portfolio is in small cap. Any thoughts on the portfolio distribution? So, it's like, so what, what uh, we can uh, do is, it's like, you can you actually can reach out to us. We can get your portfolio reviewed by a strategy team. And then we can, uh, like, decide what would be the exact asset allocation and the portfolio rebalancing is required. So that can be considered. For SWP, should it be done from the equity corpus or only from the debt uh, mutual fund corpus? It's ideal to do it from the debt mutual fund corpus because the equity part will keep on growing. Suppose, for example, if you have a one crore of corpus, so you can actually uh, withdraw five years of expenses. Suppose my month yearly expense is six lakh. So out 25 to 30 lakhs, I can actually withdraw from the equity, keep it in debt. My debt corpus will also grow at a rate of 7.5 to 7%. From there, when I trigger a systematic withdrawal option, we can actually redeem and uh, like exit the proceeds. But when I redeem from the equity, it will actually hamper the compounding of the equity part. So hence, uh, creating SWP from the debt portion would be kind of ideal. Post office monthly income versus RPA bond, which would be better? Uh, Nakul? Yeah. So uh, yes, sir. post office monthly income versus RPA bond. 
sir uh, to cater to very very different kind of things sir if monthly income is something that is need of the hour i would highly recommend you go with the post office monthly income scheme or maybe starting a if you do require a slightly higher kind of uh, uh, percentage of uh, pension i would say you put some money in senior citizen scheme maybe in the name of your parents or grandparents or uh, things like that but this will be quarterly please keep in mind rbi bond is something where you will kind of uh, get an interest only half early so uh, only two times in a year you will get the interest and this interest will also be fluctuating yes if the interest rates go up rbi bonds will do better but if you are someone who is okay with the fluctuations and doesn't require a monthly income i say go with the rbi bond but if you are someone who kind of requires that monthly income post office monthly income scheme would be uh, the better suit for you here uh, and 40 and 660 is the retirement age uh, in nps can we consider fully exposure in nps to go for a moderate risk with equity risk uh, so if you are someone who can take that risk and who thinks okay this corpus is something that uh, right now is not the case then you can go for it even in that case nps doesn't allow 100% equity exposure equity exposure is capped at 75% maximum so the rest 25% will be will have to be in government bonds or uh, corporate bonds so i would say yes uh, depending on your asset allocation and your uh, financial goals uh, nps can help you build a much higher corpus uh, example redeem a chunk from equity and move it to debt and then do swp from debt Ex exactly sir exactly sir you are correct so that is how it works you kind of uh, uh, keep some amount in debt let's say 2 or 3 years of expenses and let the rest of the money grow in equity and every 2 3 years you redeem something from equity and put it in debt whereas the equity can still go uh, without uh, any problem uh, yeah could you could please, please let us know the charges for your services should i get in touch with you personally or mail you can sir drop just uh, you can directly reach out to us or drop us a mail and we can guide you through our, all the services and what we offer at i thought uh that's a very good question sir so if you look at debt funds one important concept is how uh, debt and interest rates uh, kind of play out so let's say we are at the top end of the interest cycle and interest rates were to come down how debt funds and uh, interest rate works is they work in an inverse cycle so when interest rates go down the the price of debt funds go up when interest rate grows up the price of debt funds come down so let's say right now you invest in a bond that has uh, 9% interest let's say interest rate is down to 8% uh, your bond will be worth more because just because it offers a higher interest rate and the subsequent bonds that are being issued currently will only offer 8% so since the interest rates are gone down your price of the bond has so if you do require any further investing in it we'll be very happy to guide you on the aspect of uh, mutual funds as well as any bond issues that might come out in the future but that is just uh, an example how how interest rates and the price of debt works uh how can we get to know about financial seminars from i thought in the future uh so uh, you can register uh, for us with the social media and we'll be kind of able to send you uh, the links and stuff where uh, to for all our future webinars and this is going to be a very very important month where we are running a retirement campaign where this is not only for retirees this is also for young people who want to build that retirement corpus kind of uh invest in uh, retirement instruments as well so you know this is a month where uh, going forward the next two saturdays the next two weeks we are going to be ca coming out with different webinars on different concepts uh, as well as we are going to be posting a lot of more videos a lot of more content on our social media platforms as well which uh, solely aims to uh, address this issue uh if you guys do have any more questions uh kindly put it in the chat we'll be happy to answer
Yeah, so actually it's like we have two seminars ongoing at the same time. But the thing is, it's like uh, both the webinars would be live on YouTube and it's recorded. So it's like even if you uh, miss it out, you can actually go and visit the webinar again and rewatch it. Uh, we shall post the links uh, to the upcoming kind of uh, webinars okay. and uh, yes, the invites in the chat. You know, uh, do kind of uh, click on. If you, know, you guys have any questions, have links. links. You have anything to post in the chat? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you highlight some of the new changes made to NPS? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so one of the major changes that has been made to the NPS is the introduction of a systematic lump sum withdrawal plan. Uh, so let's say previously I invest in uh, NPS at the age of 60. I can only do two things, which is uh, kind of withdraw entirety of the corpus, uh, withdraw 60% of the total corpus. Let's say one crore, I can withdraw 60 lakhs and the rest 40 lakhs compulsorily go towards a pension uh, and annuity which will give me a pension. Now what the NPS Commission has come out with is uh, very good in terms of both tax as well as efficiency for the investor. What they are saying is let the 40% of the corpus go in NPS so that in the future it can give you a higher annuity. It will still go towards an annuity compulsorily but it can give you a higher annuity. Now what you can do is you can in kind of initiate an SWP from the 60% of the corpus and this can kind of come to you and this is tax free as well. So let's say from 60 to 75, I kind of do an SWP from my uh, NPS corpus and let's say I kind of deplete the entire corpus over a period of 10 years. Over the, but the 40% of the annuity corpus is still growing in equity and this may be grows to around, uh, let's say that 40 lakhs may be grows to around another 60 lakhs. So that is the power of uh, compounding where uh, the future, if this is put towards an annuity, I will get a much higher annuity. So as my age goes, let's say 70, my annuity rates will also go up. My annuity rates will be at the rate of 8% or 9% instead of 6% when I opted 60 years. So NPS has become much more attractive. It kind of can cater to every single one of your needs in return. If you want a lump sum, you can withdraw it. If you want a systematic withdrawal plan, you can withdraw it. If you want something like a thing where you want a, a monthly pension, the annuity caters to that. Uh, monthly interest bonds also available, right? Can you guys highlight uh, regarding that? Uh, sir, yes, sir. Monthly interest bonds are also available. Uh, but one thing with it is that the issuer or the kind of the company that kind of goes ahead with it and the interest rate that kind of get on it after tax. See, always considering the after tax interest rate is very, very important because um, let's say you get an interest of 9% on the bond. But after tax, this might be around 5.5% or 60%, especially if you're on the 30% slab rate, sir. So that is something that is very, very important to consider with bonds. But nevertheless, do contact me. I will be able to help you in that uh, regard. Uh, compulsory EPS and EPF that we can, can be able to withdraw and change to NPS. Uh, no, sir. EPS corpus is meant only for generating a pension. Out of the EPF, you have two things, your EPF corpus and EPS corpus. EPF corpus, you can withdraw. EPS corpus will go towards generating a uh, monthly pension for you. So that you cannot withdraw. Uh, how about hybrid investments like uh, REITs for retirement? The capital is also expected to go over a period of time. Uh, yes, sir. REITs and things like hybrid mutual funds and things like that can also be good for retirement. But uh, our thing is very simple. Why do you want to compromise on the maybe the higher rate of return that equity gives you? Having a corpus in let's say uh, something like a debt will kind of uh, slow over the volatility. There will, there will be little to no volatility and you can kind of expect on that amount every month 
whereas your amount will be kind of uh, going growing free flowingly in equity over a period of time. So that is why a combination of equity and uh, debt is often recommended. But uh, REITs with kind of uh, maybe not for capital appreciation, but for kind of income kind of uh, thing is also pretty good. But the thing with REITs is you will not have control on the amount that you get. Yes, it can be higher, it can be lower, but with SWP you have control over the amount. Uh, I see that uh, my colleague Vinayak has also posted about the upcoming webinars uh, as well as our uh, I thought Twitter handle. Uh, do consider following us. We do post a lot of informative content on that side of the uh, org as well. So yeah, if you guys do have any questions, do uh, post them. Uh, if not, I guess we can do close the webinar. Thank you for joining us on this uh, uh, cold Saturday morning. Uh, thank you for taking the time out as well. Uh, it has been a pleasure from my side and Vinayaka's side to kind of uh, putting it. So it's it's been it's been a great fun for us. Uh, so I do have one more question. Mm, mm -hmm. Is there any way for choosing the different pension fund managers for different asset classes? Uh, yes. So you can kind of choose different pension fund managers for different asset classes as well. This is also a change that has been introduced uh, uh, in NPS. So let's say NPS roughly has four asset classes. Uh, three to be a kind of uh, the fourth one is often ignored. So you have equity, corporate debt, government debt and alternative funds. So uh, corporate debt and government debt don't have any uh, kind of limitations, whereas equity has a maximum cap of 75% and alternative investment has a maximum cap of 5%. Now the recent change with the NPS along with the SWP is that you can choose an asset manager for each one of your asset classes. Just as an example, let's say if I think HDFC is performing better, I will kind of put HDFC towards equity, maybe Kotak towards debt, maybe ICCA towards government debt. This is just an example. You can kind of segregate it. So that is something that the NPS kind of uh, is uh, better in that aspect as well. Uh, before you can just choose one for the entire kind of asset class. Now you can kind of one for each of your asset class. Thank you. Uh, uh, can you suggest the different fund values for different uh, investments? Uh, so we don't offer a kind of investment advisory or kind of services, but uh, please do contact me. I will be kind of uh, maybe able to provide you with some guidance in that aspect, but we don't provide any kind of stock tips or kind of uh, help picking funds and stuff. So uh, please do contact me. I think if that is the case, uh, we can close on with the uh, webinar. Again, a very, very, uh, very thanks for kind of uh, joining us and taking time off out of your Saturday mornings to kind of uh, join us. Uh, it's been wonderful having you guys, and we look forward to having you all for our next webinar as well coming Saturday. Thank you. Thank you.